What's up everyone? Sam here from bite5bite.com and in this video I'm going to show you a framework for making the right decisions during your career. Because the fact of the matter is that during our career we have to make tons and tons of decisions and we usually have to make those decisions without complete information. We're not going to know what the right decision is to make so obviously we might have to make a decision between like one job offer and another job offer where this one has certain pros and that one has certain pros or we have to make a decision to learn x language versus y language or learn x technology versus y technology and it's hard for us to determine which is the quote unquote right choice and so in this video i want to share with you a framework for making those decisions and if you want tons more videos like this on developing your career as a software engineer, go ahead and click that like and subscribe. We're releasing new videos every week. All right, so how do we make the right decision with limited information? And specifically in this video, I'm gonna use the example of choosing between two different job offers. Because this is a decision that you're very likely to face during your career, and so, I want you to know that this is gonna to apply to any sort of decision that you wanna make though. So it's not just choosing between jobs. It could be choosing which project to work on. It could be choosing anything. It's about knowing what the thought process is when you have to make a decision. So let's go through the four steps to follow when trying to make a decision. And the first step is to always know what your North Star is. So I talked about this a bit in the video that I published a couple of weeks ago on how I'm doing goal setting for, 21, for 2021 but really, really important to know what your North Star is because if you don't know the general direction that you're going, it's impossible to determine like what is the decision that is going to move me towards that goal. A lot of times we're just trying to like make a decision based on what sounds good to us at the time, right? What, sound, what appeals to us more, which job sounds more exciting, but what we find is that we make that decision and then all of a sudden we're off on some tangent and it takes us away from our actual long-term life goal. And so understanding clearly what your North Star is, what the direction is that you're trying to go, is going to be really, really valuable to you. I'd encourage you to sit down for an hour and actually define like, what is my North Star? Where am I trying to get to? What is the direction that I'm trying to go in my career? Because if you understand that, then you can look at every decision that you make through the lens of, does this move me in the direction that I'm trying to go? It may not move you directly in that direction, but it can keep you from making a decision that's gonna have you going backwards. Right, like if you think about, for example, sailing, where if you want to sail upwind, you can't go straight upwind. You kind of have to go back and forth and back and forth. But knowing which direction that you were trying to go is still really, really important. If you know which direction you're trying to go, you can look at the decisions that you're making and think about what are, how is this decision directly moving me towards my North Star? Or how do I take a couple logical jumps that are ultimately going to get me to where I want to go? Now, step number two, when making decisions, and I think that this is something that people often really overlook, is I would encourage you to always prioritize growth. So this is really one of those things that when in doubt about a decision, when there are two decisions that seem like they're both good opportunities, when there are two decisions, when there are two possibilities that are both taking you towards your North Star, prioritizing growth is one of the best ways to make your decision. Because you really can't go wrong if you prioritize growth. You may be growing in the wrong direction. You may be growing in something that's not necessarily taking you directly towards your goal. But if you are growing and improving, you are always going to be moving in a positive direction. When you learn one skill, like let's say that you learn one framework or you learn one programming language. Now say later on, you know, your ultimate goal is not to be programming that programming language. Say maybe you decide to learn React Native and your ultimate goal is not to be a React Native developer learning React Native is still going to improve you overall. It's still going to help you make positive progress because one, you're learning something new. You're learning the techniques that go into that, which there is a lot. You're learning how to learn more effectively, which is an incredibly valuable skill. It's this idea of meta-learning, right? Learning how to learn effectively. And all of this comes together to, if you are growing, it is allowing you to make positive progress forward. Consider the alternative, which is that you choose a job where you are not learning and you are getting comfortable. You're like too comfortable, right? If you are in that situation, then you're not making progress forward. You start to stagnate. Maybe you're working on stuff that you're not excited about because you're not making progress, you're going to be bored. It becomes this sort of self-fulfilling prophecy of I'm not excited about work, so I'm not doing work, so I'm not growing. 
And so I don't get to work on stuff that's exciting, that limits my opportunities in the future, and you start to spiral. So if you prioritize growth, and you look at ways that you can improve, and continue to look for those opportunities, you are always going to set yourself up in a situation where you are going to have that long-term success. Your North Star is always going to be somewhere beyond where you currently are, right? Your North Star is always going to be somewhere where you are trying to get to. And that means that you are not there yet. And so you have to grow, you have to learn, you have to progress to get to that North Star. And that's why one of the things that I always do is I prioritize growth. Now, step number three to think about when making decisions is to look for asymmetric risk reward. And I love this concept because a lot of times when we look at things, there's sort of a binary, right? It's either I win or I lose, or I'm successful or I fail. But what we fail, but what we don't look at is that while that binary may be true, there may be a much bigger upside or a much bigger downside, relatively speaking. I love the example of, I believe it was Paul Tudor Jones who bought 20 million nickels. And the reason that he did this was that 20 million nickels as an investment is always going to be worth, what is that, a uh, million dollars, right? It's always gonna be worth a million dollars. But the metal in the nickel, as there's inflation, as you know, prices of metal change, could be worth a lot more than a million dollars. And so this is a perfect example of an investment where the downside is zero, right? It's never gonna be worth less than the amount that he bought it for unless like the US government stops accepting nickels, right? Which is not gonna happen anytime soon. On the flip side though, the upside potential is very, very large because there is an unlimited cap of how high the value of that metal can go. And so he took this investment, and I think this is a hypothetical example, but he, the idea is that you take this investment where there's a very low downside and a very big upside. And so I want you to start thinking about this when you are looking at decisions in your career. Right? Is there a decision that I could make that has an asymmetric upside and that minimizes my downside risk? Are there ways that, is there one job opportunity where the, you know, the best case is really high and the worst case is really bad, whereas one job opportunity where the best case is good but there is no downside? Right? Can I look at these opportunities in a way where like maybe I'm trying to decide whether to go to a small startup versus going to a big established company? Now in terms of which has the bigger, the like asymmetric risk reward, probably going to the big company, especially if it's a very prestigious company, is going to have a lot less downside. Because if you go to, if you have a company like Google on your resume, then you're always gonna be able to get other jobs. You're always gonna be safe. Whereas you go to this no-name startup, you have this potential upside, but you also have a big potential downside of like wasting a ton of time and energy and not seeing any payoff for it, and then not being in a good position to land jobs in the future. Now, your decision in terms of what that asymmetric risk reward is may be different. This is just one example. You may feel like, oh, the experience that I'm gonna gain from working at that startup, as opposed to working at a big company, is actually going to be a much higher asymmetric reward for me and so you may decide to do that. It is not like a one size fits all thing, but thinking about it with that mentality and going into it looking for those asymmetric risk rewards is really, really valuable. And now finally, step number four is to make the decisions that are right for you. And I know this sounds kind of obvious, but I think so often in our careers and in our lives, we make decisions because that is what someone else wants us to do. We make a decision because we believe that this is the right thing for us to do without actually thinking through what is it that we want? What is the decision that is going to move us towards our goals? And I wanna encourage you and give you permission as we get to the end of this video to think about what are the things that I truly want? When I'm making a decision, I think about, I go through all the logical things. I go kind of work through the process, but then there's a degree of like, what is that gut feeling? What do I truly want without thinking about it, without overanalyzing, what is that thing that I truly want? When I was trying to decide whether to go work at Amazon or whether to go work at a no-name startup in New York, it was a gut decision. It wasn't something that like I did the analysis and there were parts of me that were like, oh, Amazon is clearly the better choice, but I just didn't, it wasn't right for me at the time. And I knew there was enough upside to going for the startup that I wanted to do that instead and I decided to do that. 
And so what is it that you truly want? And avoiding as much as possible, taking those external, that external advice, especially when that advice is unqualified. Right? So often we listen to people's advice because we like them as a person or because we trust them implicitly, even though they might have no experience with the specific thing that they are giving us advice on. So it's really important as you are going through your career to think about what is it that I truly want and how can I make the decision that is truly right for me. And so with that, that's my decision-making framework. I start by knowing what my North Star is, then I prioritize growth over everything else, Next up, I look for opportunities to take asymmetric risks. And finally, I do the thing that really I believe is the right decision for me. And so with that, I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.